temporary evacuation for zone It's a tropical a cyclone, Deneo, and it's expected to become... This is by far worse than any I've seen. There's an old definition of a disaster, and that's to be without a star. And the thing that happens many times after disasters is that the power goes out in some places, and people can actually see the stars. But they can also see the stars in one another. Peace that would pass his understanding, and with leadership that would guide people through their time of need. AMCO, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, is the disaster and the development uh, arm of the whole United Methodist Church. When you give to AMCO, you give 100% to the project you are supporting and to the disaster you want to respond to. This is only possible because on AMCO Sunday, the United Methodist people raise funds so that the administrative costs of AMCO are already covered. Well, UMCOR, of course, responds to emergencies with funding, training, and expertise. But we're mostly known for being in it for the long haul. Uh, we work alongside the conferences as they set up projects and programs to try to see families and individuals through to their recovery, which sometimes takes months and most often years. We're very busy. We're a very small team but we work hard then. UMCOR exists because of the donation of its members, it's the UMC people. So if there is a million people giving a one dollar each, it makes more than one person giving 10,000. UMCOR has been for more than 75 years in this business of being hope, of being there for people in need in the moment of disaster when they have lost everything. And through AMCOR, the United Methodist people are hope in these situations. You know, walls are coming down, um, people are, are coming together. And they don't have power yet, but they're still finding ways to feed each other. And that feeds the soul, not just the body. Lift up those who have fallen. What a privilege it is those. to be part of this important ministry, the United Methodist Church, to be able to say we're there, we bring hope, and we bring healing. As people are helping their neighbor and helping each other in their community, they begin to see that the love of God has not left them. It's right there. So UMCOR wants to support that wonderful thing that can happen after disasters. UMCOR wants to be there with the people who are noticing the stars in one another, and they're noticing God's grace all around them.
Hi, this is Pastor Steve of North Hollywood First United Methodist Church, and I greet you on this fourth Sunday of Lent and welcome you to our online virtual worship service. We are a place where everyone is welcome, so I hope that you are nestled in some place comfortable and ready to sit in and join us as we continue to explore the choices that Lent presents us to grow closer to Christ so that our lives might reflect and resemble Christ more and more as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection and the life that comes from his passion. This morning, I hope that you will join us as we begin our worship with the singing of our opening hymn, hymn number 185, When Morning Gilds the Sky. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awakening cries, may Jesus Christ be praised, alike at work and prayer, to Jesus I repair, may Jesus Christ be night becomes as day when from the heart we say may Jesus Christ be praised the power of darkness fear when this sweet chant they hear may Jesus Christ be Great triune God, we have gathered here in your name as an act of faith, believing that you are not only among us, but that you love us. It is often hard to recognize your love, see your mercy, and feel your presence, Lord. Help us today in our worship that we might be transparent to your grace as you reveal yourself to each one of us. Amen. And if you'll now please take a look at your screens, we will join together in the call to worship. God loves us with a steadfast love. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God loves us so much, he gave us his son. Let us believe and have eternal life. God loves us with a great love, rich in mercy. Let us have faith to receive this grace. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. Hey kids! So today I was thinking about one of my favorite Bible verses, and it begins with, For God so loved the world. And in thinking about that Bible verse, I started to wonder about just how big God's love really is and how I can measure it. So today I have with me different measuring tools that we would use to measure all sorts of things because I want to see, can we measure God's love? 
So let's say we're baking something like cookies. Well, we would use a measuring cup to measure the flour and the sugar and the milk and maybe measuring spoons to measure out the baking soda and the salt. Well, maybe we could use these things to measure God's love. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My cup runneth over. Hmm. Well, if our cup will run over, maybe we can't use this measuring cup or these spoons to measure God's love. Um, but if we were building something, we would use a measuring tape um, to measure how wide, how long, how deep something is, right? Well, maybe we could use a measuring tape to measure God's love. The Bible says that God's love is higher than the heavens. So, mm, I don't think that we can use this little measuring tape to measure God's love. Well, what about measuring time? Um, we use a watch to measure time. Maybe we could measure God's love. Well, the Bible says that God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. Wow. If God's love is from everlasting to everlasting, well, maybe we can't use a watch to measure God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. How do we measure a love like that? Well, we can't and we don't need to, but we need to experience it. So my prayer for all of you kids is that you will be able to understand how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love truly is, and that you get to experience it, even if it's so great, it's hard to understand. Have a grateful day. Good morning. Our scripture today is from John chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so too must the Son of Man be lifted up, that anyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear of being exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We experience light and darkness every day. The sun comes up and the day is filled with light and color. And then the sun goes down and the night descends into darkness. As human beings, for the most part, we choose to do most of our activities during the day when we see best. Now, some of this has changed as human beings have learned how to fill the darkness with lights. But you get the idea. But darkness does have its advantage. First of all, darkness is cheap. Darkness is a default of existence, and it requires no effort and no energy. And the second thing is that darkness is, is good for hiding. Military forces train to operate at night when their attacks are less likely to be seen. Hide-and-seek becomes a much more difficult game for the seeker when it is played in the dark. 
dark restaurants, hide our blemishes, and they create private, intimate spaces. See, darkness can become something of an invisibility cloak. And we can use that to our advantage. In our own homes, we hide things in dark corners so that guests don't see the cracks or the discolorations. And we close the doors so that people don't see the mess inside some rooms. And we often stuff our mess into closets and drawers and shut them so that our mess is kept out of sight. And even though we intend to go back in and clean out those closets and spaces, let's be honest, we, we rarely do. Because after all, out of sight, out of mind, right? Now I share these things because light and dark play an important role in this morning scripture lesson. The reading begins in the middle of a conversation that Jesus has with a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was sent by the Pharisees to go and to question Jesus. This meeting occurs after Jesus has cleared out the temple, which we talked about last week. And the Pharisees are probably trying to figure out if Jesus was someone to support and to claim as their own, or if Jesus was to be opposed as dangerous and heretical. So Nicodemus comes at night in the darkness. And he probably chooses this time so that people don't notice him entering the place where Jesus is staying. We can assume that there were stories and rumors going around about Jesus. And it might have even been dangerous to be seen with him after his stunt in the temple. So Nicodemus sneaks through the night for for a clandestine meeting with Jesus. And the conversation begins at John chapter 3, verse 1. And it shifts through a number of topics, like the need to be born again, to be born from above, in order to understand spiritual things. Nicodemus doesn't get the concept, so Jesus keeps teaching, which is where we pick it up. Where Jesus gets very clear about what he has come to do. And most people think that it is found in the verse that everyone memorizes, John 3.16. And it is. And you know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. And we love this verse. And we love the promise in it. However, I'm not going to focus on this verse. I'd rather move on to the next one, verse 17, which says, Indeed, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Jesus clearly understands that he is here to save the world through his actions, through his teaching, and through his death and resurrection. He has also come to reveal that God is a God of love, and love is the foundation of God's kingdom. And in the end, God's love trumps everything else, even justice. Now, don't get me wrong. Jesus says that there is a judgment here, but the judgment isn't a punishment that is driven by anger. It is simply the outcome of those who are afraid Those who are afraid of the light and choose to remain in the darkness. Remember, in the first chapter of John's gospel, Jesus is introduced as the light, the true light, the light which enlightens everyone, the light which is life, the light which has entered the world, the light which shines in the darkness. And here in the third chapter, Jesus essentially stares at Nicodemus and says again, I am the light of the world. Are you going to choose to follow me? Or are you going to choose to remain in the darkness? 
this morning, on this fourth Sunday in Lent, that's the choice that's being presented to us. Will we choose to live a life illuminated by the light that Jesus brought into the world? Or will we choose to live outside of that light? You see, one way will open God's presence and action to you now. And one way will result in God's presence remaining hidden. And one way will make it clear that all you have done has been done in God. And one way will expose that your actions are not Christ-like. And it seems simple. Just let the light of Christ shine in you. But there's more to it. Last week, we talked about the relational nature of prayer and how true intimacy comes when you let all that is in you pour out before God. And if you took my challenge and set aside a half hour to pray in the way I encouraged you to pray, you may have discovered that it isn't easy. You may have discovered that in our lives and in our souls, we have those closets and the drawers that we keep closed because we don't want anyone to see what we have in them, not even God. But here's the thing. Those hidden places, those shadows, hold us captive to the fears and the shame and the guilt that they contain. And they lie to us. And they tell us that God will reject us and judge us because of what is in those drawers and in those closets. Or else they take the truth of God's love and forgiveness and tell you that you don't have to open those places. And the result is always the same. We miss out on the kingdom of God. I believe with all of my heart that God wants you to open those closets Open those drawers and let Christ's light shine in them. And when you can live your life with nothing to hide, you you don't have to hide. And here's the thing. The light, that light that shines in you will shine out of you and people will notice. We started the service with a highlight with a video highlighting the service agency that we Methodists refer to as UMCOR. And this organization was born out of an understanding that in times of disaster, people need help and people need relief in order to make it through. Our tradition saw this work as an extension of the good deeds that we were created to do in Christ. And it has become one of the ways that we let the light of Christ shine in places where people might feel trapped in darkness in the hopes that they might experience and see the nearness of God's kingdom. You will have an opportunity to contribute to this ministry later in the service. And we want you to know that our apportionments and today's special gifts are what support the infrastructure of the agency so that when people donate to a particular disaster relief effort, they can be assured that 100% of their contribution goes directly to that specific effort. But this morning is more than about UMCOR. It's about stepping into the light of Christ with every part of your life. Choose light over darkness. Walk as a child of the light. And let your life shine the light of Christ so that the world around you catches a glimpse of a reality that God is present and at work in the world. Amen. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart.
Good morning. Please join me in prayer. When I say the day of the Lord is coming, you reply, he abounds in steadfast love. And those words will appear on the screen at the right time. Holy God, when we feel that we have lost direction as a people or even as a person, help us remember your presence in our wilderness journeys. The day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. Great deliverer, your steadfast love and wonderful works have spared us of troubles, known and unknown, for you are in love with us. The day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. Holy Spirit, help us remember the great work that Christ accomplished for us, which no other person could perform. Help us confess with gladness, by grace we have been saved. The day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. Lord Jesus, gift of mercy from God the Father, you love us even when we are most unlovable, lost, and afraid. Thank you for your grace. The day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. Lord Jesus Christ, lifted up on the cross like a serpent in the wilderness. Lift up our eyes to see you as the Lord and Savior, loving God's whole world. The day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. We bring before you now those whom you love with special needs, known to us as family and friends. Please add your prayers here. The day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. Though we remember we are dust and to dust we shall return, we remember that we are your precious dust. Hear us now as we say the prayer Jesus taught his followers to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've come to a time of announcements, but we would first like to give you an invitation to the offering. You may give to the church one of three ways, text to tithe, Text the amount you'd like to give to the number on your screens. It's a one-time setup and it's fast and simple. You can go to our website at www.nohofumc.org and click giving, or you may mail your tithes and offerings to the church office at 4832 Tahunga Avenue in North Hollywood, California, 91601. Please also remember Today is UMCOR Sunday, so give extra and generously. Well, you know, the funny thing is, and this happened even two years ago, I'd wear a Sandy shirt and people would say, oh, is that still going on? Oh, is that still happening? You know, it's amazing how quickly it fell off the radar. And yet there are so many people who are still suffering. I think the, the thing that encourages me most is the continued work of the church. Long-term recovery is just that. It's long. The money that you've been given to Umcor, those special collection Sundays, have come back right back into our communities. Very often people say, well, we give to the church and we don't see where it goes. Well, I said to them, look, it comes right back into your community. It may not come back into your own home, but your neighbor's homes, for example. Without the support of the donors, and UMCOR and the Methodists, we would still probably be in a lot of despair in Queens. After a lot of the other organizations have done their work and done their work well, who's left? It's the people, and in many cases, the church. And, and I think the church has embraced this, and they see disaster response and recovery not as something that they you know, have to do, 
it's a ministry. It's not a program. It's a ministry. And it's a ministry that more and more feel like they need to be a part of because, you know, it, something's going to happen somewhere. And we thank you so much for your continued giving. Following worship at 11.30 a.m., you are welcome to a time of virtual fellowship on Zoom. Meeting ID is on your screens. Please pop in and say hello. Pastor Steve's Lenten Bible study continues on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. They are discussing The Way by Adam Hamilton this Lenten season. The book is available electronically on Amazon.com or in print at Cokesbury.com. And the study continues until March 25th, so jump in at any time. The North Hollywood Interfaith Food Pantry has an updated website, and they would love for you to check it out at www.nhifp.org. The pantry also has a wish list of foods that they need cereal, canned soup, canned vegetables, canned fruit, protein like canned tuna or chicken, white rice, canned beans, packaged beans, peanut butter, and extras like condiments and sauces, protein bars, ramen noodles, fruit bars, tea, coffee, and packaged cookies, and powdered milk. They also need adult diapers in large sizes only. Please drop off your donations at First Christian Church on Moore Park and Colfax, Mondays and Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Volunteers will be on hand to unload your car. If you're interested in volunteering in person, please contact Barbara Javits. Palm Sunday is March 28th, and we will be hosting a drive through event from 10 a.m. to noon in our church parking lot. Please come by and pick up your Holy Week in a box and fresh palm frond to celebrate the High Holy Season. Your box will include worship and communion elements to help you on your journey with Jesus to the cross. Manny's coffee will also be on hand, so don't miss it. Please set an alert on your phone to come by. On Saturday, April 3rd, we'll be hosting another community event. Get ready for our Easter egg extravaganza drive through from 10 a.m. to noon in our church parking lot. This is a drive up event and drive through event only, so no walk-ins will be allowed. Everyone will still be adhering to the safety protocols and social distancing with masks required. We still need participants to volunteer their time to decorate their trunks and hand out candy filled Easter eggs or different toys or stickers. So if you're able to do this, sign up at nohofumc at gmail.com. We'll be so excited to have you join in the fun. So hop to it. If you are in need of prayer or any assistance, please contact us at nohofumc at gmail.com and we will be able to get you connected with Pastor Steve. And with these things in our hearts and our minds, let us conclude this morning's worship service by singing our closing hymn. I know he holds 
the future and life is worth the living just because he lives how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy they give but braver still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because i know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives and then one day i'll cross the river i'll find life's final walk with pain and then as death gives way to victory i'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know. And life is worth the living just because he lives. As we come to the end of our time together this morning, I hope that you are considering what it means to walk as a child of light, what it means to choose light instead of darkness and consider how you might open those hidden spaces, those drawers and those closets in your soul so that the light of Christ might shine within them. It's time to come out of hiding and it's time to live the full life of faith, faith in Christ. So as we go forth from here, may you consider what you can do to be the light of Christ as it shines within you, to reflect it to those around you so that the world might know that God is present and active and at work and that God's love prevails in all situations. Go filled with the power and the gifts of the Spirit to be a vessel of love for all the world. Let us go in peace. Amen.